This is not investment advice. This is purely meant for your enjoyment. Please consult a licensed investment professional prior to making any investment of any kind. All investments have inherent risk. Again, this is not investment advice. This is just the story of one man building a portfolio for educational and entertainment purposes. Invest at your own risk. What's going on, guys? We are back. Take number three. And it's not even my fault this time. I'm not even going to put this one on Calvin. It's just growing pains. We're just learning. Hopefully I sound all right. I don't have my headphones on. But not only do we have a banger episode for you guys, because we literally just recorded it and it was sick. Um, But my iPad just died. Literally recorded the last episode, had my notes on the iPad. It's dead. Thank God we take our notes in Notion. Notion doesn't sponsor this, but if they did, that would have been a great ad spot. Let me pull up the notes for today's episode. For anyone that's new, thank you guys for checking out the episode. My name is Rob Riley. Calvin McChesney is behind the camera, and this is Free Coffee. Today is episode number four of Let's Build a Portfolio, where we're going to take $100 invested and turn it into $100 a month of passive income from dividend growth stocks. Now, that might sound insane. If you're new here and this is your first Let's Build a Portfolio episode, you might want to go back to episode number one, learn why we're doing this, uh, you know, the the rules we have in place for the challenge, all that good stuff. Remember, we do put a disclaimer at the beginning, but this is not stock investment advice. Always consult a legal uh, investment advisor before making any investments of any sort. All, you know, investments have inherent risk. So, If you guys know me, you guys know I am a dividend growth investor. That's pretty clear by this point, and I am looking to pursue FIRE. Now, FIRE is financial independence, retire early, right? That's what it means. And while I do not plan on not working, I love working, I love the game of business and all that fun stuff, I do like the idea of having the peace of mind of being financially independent from my business. Now, that is a long ways away still, but... I'm on that journey and I'm investing in dividend growth stocks to make it happen. This journey, we are investing $100 a month to build $100 in passive income in a separate portfolio where I'm 100% transparent about everything I'm buying, why I'm buying it, how much I bought it for, the income, everything about the portfolio is shared live, real time with monthly updates. And this is the December 2020 update of Let's Build a Portfolio. So last month, we did an analysis on Starbucks, ticker symbol SBUX. I ended up adding it to the podcast portfolio. And since we added it to the podcast portfolio, Starbucks has gone up over 10%. So not to, uh, you know, pat myself on the back here, but I'm patting myself on the back here. I'm pretty happy with that one. Now, that's not the goal of dividend growth investing, but it is nice to see a year's worth of return in less than a month. That's pretty cool. And the thing about dividend growth investing is that even if it went down, that would have been a win because it's a great company. We analyzed it in the last episode. We wanted it in the portfolio. If you buy stocks cheaper, as long as the company's fundamentals don't change, all that means is you're getting a higher starting yield. You're getting more for your money. So when it goes down, great. You get a higher starting yield. When it goes up, great. You made money. That wasn't the goal, but hey, who doesn't like making a little bit extra money? So we've added $100 for the month of December because we add $100 a month to this portfolio to be the capital that we work with. And we've seen a $55 total increase in the portfolio value, bringing the total portfolio to $1,755.35. So our purchases have already grown over 6% in the last two months, but Remember, capital appreciation is not the goal. We've also received our first dividends to the portfolio. Visa paid us 32 cents and Starbucks paid us 90 cents. And those were automatically reinvested back into those respective companies. Now, that is why I use the Charles Schwab platform. Robinhood does not offer that function. M1 might. 
M1 does have a really good, what looks to be a really good platform. I've never used it, but I've seen videos on it. M1 might have that function as well, but I love it. I think it's honestly a necessity. If you're going to invest in dividends, you want to pick a platform that allows you to automatically reinvest because getting those fractional shares and then letting it compound and earn you a little bit more in dividends the following month it, or following quarter, whenever it pays you a dividend is I think it's one of the most important things. It allows your money to compound when you're talking about smaller values like this. Like I don't think, and I know for a fact, you can't buy 32 cents of Visa on Robinhood. So to be able to have it automatically happen, automatically compound, and then the next time when you get paid a dividend, you're going to earn a small dividend on that dividend you earned before. That's that's what compounding is. That all happens automatically. So all of it is reinvested, uh, and now we own fractional shares in our portfolio. We're recording this on the 3rd of December. It won't be out for uh, quite a bit longer. So if any port, if any dividends do get added and we get paid any more dividends in the month of December, I will be sure to share that in the January update. Uh, today, we have about 52% of our portfolio invested, and that's before we talk about the stock that we are adding to the portfolio today. We have a new stock. Um, we're definitely looking, I'm definitely looking to get a lot more of that free cash invested today. We have enough stocks, we're diversified enough that it's time to start getting a good chunk of our portfolio invested, right? That's not to say we won't add stocks in the future, but we definitely want to get more and more of that invested. So uh, I'll share why I'm, what I'm buying, why I'm buying, all that sort of stuff. And we, like I said, are going to be adding a new position to the portfolio today. So let's talk about something. One of my biggest goals with this podcast is teaching people how to be financially independent of a job, right? So it's it's a lot, it's it's the framework to a lot of the videos and, and podcasts that we put out here. The idea that you can cover all of your living expenses and not have to work to earn your income is kind of crazy. And it's, not, it's something that I had a hard time believing, it's something that I think a lot of people have a hard time believing. But dividends are truly, I'm gonna say truly twice, Dividends are one of the only ways that you can truly have passive income, right? You buy a stock, you don't ever have to do anything again. And as long as that company continues to pay dividends, you will continue to receive dividends. But one of the major reasons for me going through the work of building a portfolio literally from scratch and super slowly like this is to show that anyone can do it, right? Obviously, we can make content out of it, enjoy the, the discussion that comes out of these episodes, but also $100 a month, it's possible for anyone, right? You can do that using, you know, flipping stuff off Facebook Marketplace or just, you know, $3 and some cents a day. So that's like not getting the Dunkin' Frappuccino that my boys got on the table over here. You just don't buy that. Hey, no. <laughs> you just don't buy that and you got yourself a let's build a portfolio, right? Uh, yeah, you're right, I guess. Yeah. I'm just playing with you, by the way. I think you can get your Dunkin' Frappuccino and build yeah, a portfolio I'm anyway. I'm steady sipping. <laughs> We both literally when so we record these uh, most of the time, unless it's the weekends, like around 530 and we both drink coffee right before we do it. Do you have trouble sleeping? Yeah, but I mean, I stay up to like two these days oh, anyway. So. I literally on the nights we record, I always struggle to go to bed. I, I can't help it. And I try to like I go to bed super early, like 10, like 930, 10. Can't do it. And these nights I can't like I literally will just lay in bed until like 1130. But it's worth it. We got the energy for the pot. High energy. High, high energy talking about dividends. So so in the past, if you did start on episode number one, you knew that part of the deal of this series is that with every episode, we have some sort of a story or a lesson to go along with it. And I have some bad news. Today, we're not doing that. We are not going to do that. This analysis that I'm about to dive into here on my phone for you guys is long. I won't lie. This is a long, let's build a portfolio, but I think you guys will get enough out of it and enough value out of it that we don't need to go into a lesson today, but we'll be back on that track for the next one. So if you do enjoy the stock analysis and you get some value out of it and you want to support the podcast, share this on your story, tag us, um, you know, leave a review, subscribe, like anything you do it really means the world. And honestly, we've been getting a ton of love on the last couple of episodes and it's been incredible. I mean, how many likes on the last video? 17. That's nuts. That we, me and Kelv, every time we, we like hit five and it was like, whoa, we were texting each other. 
and we hit 10 and it was like, whoa we had 100 views in like the first like 30 hours and it was whoa it's all thanks to the wonderful viewers honestly channel. thank you guys so much it literally we we geek out over this stuff it's so much fun and we just we're happy that we're making stuff that people want to want to consume that means the world that's what we're here to do so thank Seriously. you guys today the stock that we're going to be analyzing today i've never heard of the stock prior to me finding it um Literally had never heard about it in a dividend investing video, in an audio book, in a stock analysis, nothing. Never had heard about this before. So you might be asking, how do you find a stock that you'd never heard of before? I was using a screener uh, on Schwab. They have a screening app. So you can put in certain criteria and it'll show you all the stocks that hit that criteria. So I was putting in some pretty outrageous numbers. I was like, man, hmm, I've never heard of this company, but so let's kind of look at it because the numbers are outrageous. We're going to get into that in one minute. But you know, there's there's dividend traps, there's dividend stock investing traps, and you don't want to fall for those. And those are when companies pay really high dividends just to look good on paper. Now, the fundamental business is bad. The payout ratio is ludicrous. Like, you know, everything else is wrong. But for the investor that only looks at dividend yield, they'll fall into these traps and they'll, the stocks will rise because a lot of investors will buy and hold the stock. The phone is ringing yet again. But at the end of the day, you don't want to fall for these traps. And it is really important to make sure that we find stocks that aren't traps if we are looking at companies that we had never heard of before. So without further ado, the company that we are going to be analyzing today. Now, I did tell you we added a stock to the portfolio. I didn't say it was this one. So if you want to know what stock we actually added to the portfolio, you have to wait to the end. Because I'm going to tell you whether or not I personally believe that this is whether or not this is a ooh, almost let it slip whether or not this is a dividend trap or if this is a legitimate company that we are going to be I am going to be investing my money into. That company is Federal Agricultural Mortgage Corporation. Freaking mouthful. Ticker symbol AGM, and we are going to be referring to it as AGM throughout the pod from here on out because that is a lot to be saying. Now, you may, you may have heard of this company, and I might not be bringing anything new to you, and you might have just found this, this micro crap business. Good for you. I didn't know about it. I hope that this is a stock that may, might surprise a lot of you, um, but without further ado, Let's look at the big important numbers, right? So AGM, at the time of me recording this, offering a 4.6% starting dividend yield. Calvin, what do you think of a 4.6% dividend yield? Top notch. Top notch, right? Yeah. 10-year dividend growth rate of 30% year over year. Calvin, what do you think about that? Top notch. Top notch. Three-year, year over year growth rate of 39%. Bang Insane and a hundred and twenty eight percent capital appreciation over the last five years. Awesome. Can't can't even fathom that this is legitimate. I mean, a four point six percent dividend starting yield or starting dividend yield is like, yeah, that's that's common. And sure, a thirty percent dividend growth rate, yeah, that's common too. But together, together, I mean that is Mind blowing. That is, I mean, this is the stuff that dividend growth investors dream of. So, at first glance, this can't be real. These are insane numbers. I've personally never seen a stock with numbers as good as this right off the rip. Um, this uh, dividend growth rate of 30% means that your income doubles. Your income. So, let's say you hit that $100 a month number. Your income will double every 2.2 years. That's not like. You literally don't do anything. You don't reinvest your dividends. You don't put any more money into it. But if you had enough money in this to earn you $100 a month at the current growth rate, which means nothing for future growth rate, but you know, fu- you know, you can't predict future growth rate, but let's just say they continued at the trajectory that they were on, you'd literally be earning $200 a month in 2.2 years from that point. For doing nothing else, your income would double. Insane. So... My first thought, as someone who had never heard of this company, and for a company that has such good numbers, it's too good to be true, right? I follow the rule that if something's too good to be true or looks too good to be true, guess what? It's too good to be true. So 
I deep dove this company. Let's talk about what they do. I hopped on their site and discovered that they focus on financing mortgages for rural America. Their mission consists of helping farmers, and I'm literally reading word for word right now. Their mission consists of helping farmers find low-cost solutions to their mortgage needs uh, to help build a strong rural America. They offer an array of services to farmers, but they mainly offer mortgages for farms and for ranches. So these are income-producing rural American, America, American land. Taking a look at their site, you'll see pictures of like hardworking Americans and buttoned up like bank guys. It's so funny. They're just like, it's so weird. But, you know, I'm not from rural America. I don't connect with these people as peers at all. I, I know one guy who's a farmer, but he's a family friend. I wouldn't, you know, I couldn't call his phone. Calvin, you know any farmers? None. No, no farmers. So like we don't, I don't connect with these people as peers. So I don't understand the business. However, I do understand the importance of the business, right? I go grocery shopping. No, I don't. Actually, talked about it on the last episode, I use Instacart. But I buy groceries, to be more specific, right? Because I don't want to be called out like, oh, you said you didn't buy. No, I buy groceries. But when I go to the store, you you know, you know that there's going to be groceries there. That's because of farmers. They, like, they power that, you know, when you go to the store, you can expect there to be ground beef and lettuce and broccoli and everything else that is produced on a farm. You know what I mean? That sort of stuff, you can count on it. And that's because of the farms and these income producing rural American farms. So uh, let's take a look at the business, right? If you guys know me, you know that I always say, I'm not going to deep dive why, but I always say you have to know and love a business when you invest in it. Otherwise, you won't be resilient to downturns. This analysis that we're about to get into is my deep dive of the company, right? This was me trying to figure out, can I love this business? Can I understand this business? Can I know it on a, you know, a very high level to be able to say like, yeah, I'm comfortable putting my money in this and expecting it to last for generations. Okay. So let's hop right into it. Let's talk leadership. Let's start with the people that run this business. Many of you may have guessed, but guess what? It's old white men. Uh, definitely not what you love to see. You love to see some diversity in the C-suite. Um, I will say the one positive note is their CFO is a woman by the name of Aparna Ramesh. Now, she adds a bit of diversity to the um, C-suite. But she also comes from a long history in banking, right? She offers um, an incredible background of knowledge in this industry, which is really important. The CFO is such a crucial position in these businesses, especially when I'm investing in them. You know, I want the money to be handled right. Um, so obviously moving forward, you'd love to see more diversity in a business than this. Um, diversity is what breeds innovation. There's no way around it. That is fact. Diversity breeds innovation, and you want to see innovation in companies. This is not cutting it, but hopefully in the future you see some more positive change. So they do seem to be extremely transparent in their reporting, though. They have an incredible amount of data in their website in regards to the economy and how their customers are doing, as well as like how the general, you know, um, what did I say, farm market, like rural America income producing land market, like farms, how everything's doing. They talk about a lot of stuff. They obviously also have all the data that's required for publicly traded companies. So all of that's available. They need that to be available, but I'm talking about like extra. And that was kind of cool to see. They really are clearly looking at data and, and run off of numbers and data, which is, which is good. You want to see that. You want to see people that understand their market. So Things look generally positive from their reports. Um, the stock itself has fallen to $70 from its high of $99 in 2018, but it's been on the rise since the initial fall of the pandemic when it took a sharp dive down. So the question all dividend growth investors should be asking, if you put your money in this stock, how safe is your dividend, right? Obviously, you want to see it continue to grow, but right now, can you expect the same dividend? Can you expect no growth, right? Well, their payout ratio is 54% high, unfortunately. 
not great, um, but it isn't bad if it can be supported by large net income growth. So how do they do there? They're up significantly in net income from quarter three of 2019 to quarter three of 2020. They're up around 28%, but they're down significantly from quarter two of 2020 to quarter three of 2020, about 30%. That's huge. Um, But here's the thing. I looked at these numbers and I included them because I think they're important when you're analyzing the stock, but I don't see this as big of a, as, as big of a problem as it might look at face value. The company showed they can do a ton of revenue in quarter two of 2020 in, in, you know, ton of revenue, not like Apple, they're a micro cap company. They're not doing Apple's revenue, but a ton of revenue in the grand schemes of this business. Um, I don't know why the, um, you know, the net income dropped off from quarter two to quarter three of this year. My guess is in quarter two, stimulus was still fresh. People had money. Businesses had money. I'm going to guess. I mean, the economy, we haven't seen a stimulus bill passed. Rural America is not getting any help. No one in America is getting any help right now through this pandemic. So I'm going to guess people just had to stop paying some of their bills. People had to, you know, cut back and maybe some people didn't get their mortgages paid, you know, or are pushing it back. At the end of the day, though, I looked at this like, wow, look at what they did in quarter two. When the economy is healthy, they clearly did a large amount of revenue. They can support their dividend. They're growing at a rapid rate with net income, not gross income. They're growing the bottom line by a lot of money, and that's what the dividends paid from. That's good. That's all positive stuff. I think if the economy comes, when the economy comes back around, this business will be in a good place. Now, again, this is not investment advice. I am not persuading you to buy this company. I'm just talking about what was going through my mind when I was analyzing this company. Let's talk about more numbers. Their short-term assets and cash increasing year over year. Their long-term assets increasing year over year. Their accounts payable are down significantly year over year. These are really promising things of a well-ran business. These guys are a micro cap business, which means they're really small in the grand scheme of publicly traded companies. But they have the premise of a really well-ran business, right? And that's what matters. Now, this statistic that I'm about to share with you blew me away because in this market, when you're looking at the price to earnings ratio, the PE ratio, it's become, I don't want to say irrelevant, but I just did. It's become irrelevant. Tesla has traded at and above a PE of 1,000. So clearly it doesn't matter there. Blue chip companies have traded well above 25. Doesn't matter there, right? I don't know, you know, I always believe you always have to be investing, so I'm not too worried about it. And I think, unfortunately, the inflation that we're going to see is probably going to make up for some of that massive price to earnings ratio just because of the devaluation of the dollar. However, PE still matters. There's no way around it. But right now, it's become irrelevant to most investors. This company, at the time of us recording it, is trading at a PE of 8.7. 8.7. That's insane, especially in this market where everything's so high. They're making a net income before taxes that's growing year over year at quite a high rate, and they're very profitable. When the market rebounds or another stimulus comes out, think this company will be in a great place. I don't understand why it's so cheap. And this PE explains why the dividend yield right now is so high. This company is not being bought up. People, I don't think people know about it. It's not popular. It's not hot or sexy. But with a company that's as cheap as this at a PE of 8.7, that clearly explains the high, high starting yield at 4.6%. I was stoked when I saw this. So to summarize, this is a business that I think is definitely, definitely, and I cannot understate this enough, more risky than a blue, like significantly more risky. It's a micro cap stock. It's, I don't even want to say it's, 
it's way, 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 way more likely that this thing, you know, cuts its dividend or even goes to zero, right? Like this is a risky investment, a micro cap stock doing these kind of numbers. It's risky. There's no way around it. But I think the numbers don't lie. Looking at the numbers, it looks to be a well-oiled machine, a well-ran business, right? With clearly people who are analyzing data and working off of it. And that's what you like to see. We're investing in, I am investing in companies for decades, decades, generational. I'm planning on owning these companies. I want companies that are well ran. It looks to be that way for this one. Their starting yield and growth rate is incredible. And I'd love for this company to succeed. And with that, we've added this position, AGM to the portfolio we're getting a lot of our portfolio invested this week i bought eight shares at seventy dollars and 46 cents total cost of five hundred and sixty three dollars and sixty eight cents now we also purchased one more stock not a new stock to the portfolio but we added one more share of 3m ticker symbol mmm now, this is a company we already owned and we already did an analysis on. So if you want to hear it and you haven't already, go to episode two of Let's Build a Portfolio when we added this to the portfolio. I'm very bullish on the stock and I talk about why I love 3M in that episode. So all of this means that now we have 94% of our portfolio invested. Now, this brings our total portfolio cash flow, so the dividends, to $54.74 a year or $4.56 a month. That means that we've officially crossed over the 4% mark to our goal of $100 a month in passive income. We're halfway to 5%. Um, hopefully, if we're lucky, we'll actually see in early 2021 some dividend growth you know, or dividend increases. Now, you know, we have some stocks that grow more than others, but if we've seen average growth rate across our entire portfolio of at least 10 percent what that'll mean is that'll push us over the five dollar a month mark so without investing any more money or without having you know uh dividends reinvested nothing else will be pushed above that five dollar mark which is pretty cool because obviously we're going to continue adding money maybe we can find some side hustles to add some money into the portfolio extra to the hundred dollars a month before the next update and obviously, we're going to reinvest dividends. So that's not really, you know, how things are going to work out. But it's just kind of cool to think about that. If you don't do anything else, your income is still going to grow. Kind of fun. So this is the last episode of Let's Build a Portfolio for 2020. Uh, that's kind of crazy. Started in 2020. This is the last episode of 2020. So really just getting started on this journey. And honestly, just thankful you guys are here for long for the ride. Calvin, what do you think? about let's build a portfolio in 2021. What do you think we're going to see? Uh, some pretty good dividends. Yep. Uh, a lot of growth. Yep. Exactly what we want to see. Absolutely. We're manifesting greatness over here. This man's got the uh, cappuccino or whatever it is, and he's just over there manifesting greatness for your boy. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So definitely, if you enjoyed this analysis and you want to see more, and you want to see this podcast or the, the portfolio grow over time, Subscribe, hit that bell, leave a like, leave a rating. Not only does it help us out, but it'll also make sure that you are notified or at least that you are subscribed. So when the next one comes out, you'll be right there, ready to catch it. Because like I said, we talked about Starbucks last month and it's already up 10% this month. Now, that is no guarantee that anything we say on here is factual. None of this is investment advice. Please invest at your own risk. And understand that all investments have inherent risk. With that, this is the last episode of Let's Build a Portfolio for 2020. My name is Rob Riley. Calvin McChesney is behind the camera. This is free coffee. Keep investing, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.